Okay, so in order to understand concurrency in Go, you need to understand what a Go routine is. So let's just imagine we have our program here and we have our main function here. And in this main function, we're calling this function, this takes forever, which we can just imagine is a function that does some work that takes a long time. And we're gonna say that this function takes in some ID and it uses that ID and it does some work that takes a long time. You're just gonna have to use your imagination here. So we'll just emulate that behavior by using time.sleep. So as it stands right now, this, this takes forever function call in our main function is actually going to block our main function. So we won't be able to reach this print line function here until this function completes because this code is synchronous. Meaning that when we call this function in main, main needs to wait for this function to return before it can move on to the next line of code here. But we can actually avoid needing to wait for this function to complete by just using the go keyword. So we can just put go there like that and now we've made this code asynchronous. That means that when main gets here, it's going to fork the call to this function off of itself, and then it's just going to continue down to printing this line without waiting for this. So what does that even mean? Let me just show you. So if we remove the go keyword here, and we call this function twice, and we'll just change this ID, if this function here takes two seconds every time it runs, and we're calling it twice here without using the go keyword, how long do you think it's gonna take for the entire main function to complete running? Well, we can actually time it. We can just create this time.now for our starting point, and once this function completes, we can just print time.since our starting time. You can probably guess how long this entire function is gonna take, so let's just do go run no routine, and you can see that this took four point something seconds, which is probably what you already expected, right? But that's without the use of Go routines. This code is still behaving in a synchronous manner. So if we go ahead and put the Go keyword in front of both of these calls, we can go ahead and run this again. And you see that the program finishes in like less than a second, right? And you're probably wondering, wait, how, did, how is that even possible? Well, that's because Remember, main's not waiting for either of these functions here. So like, it's just gonna fork this off and fork this off and it's just gonna continue with what it's doing. It's gonna go ahead and print done and then it's just gonna print the time since it started. It's not gonna wait for these or anything. Main doesn't even know if these completed or not because these go routines never join back with the main function. So that's what the go keyword does. But of course, as you've probably already noticed, this code as it stands right now is pretty much useless to us. And that's because these two go routines are in no way synced with our main go routine. So what we need to do is we need to create a join point. We need to create a point at which these two go routines eventually rejoin the main function. Because of course our main function needs to know if these IDs were ever processed in this, this takes forever function. So the next thing that we need to know to actually be able to create this join point is we need to know about channels. So let's go ahead and create a channel. So we can create a channel by using this make function and the channel is going to contain values of type string. And in Go, you can either make a buffered or unbuffered channel. So a buffer channel is going to take in some capacity. So this means that this channel has a, capac a capacity of 10. And an unbuffered channel is basically, it's a zero capacity channel. So an unbuffered channel, essentially it needs a receiver as soon as something is put onto the channel. And that's because it has a capacity of zero. So it's not like we can put something on this channel and leave it there. So for example, if we take my channel, and we try to put something on it. And we let's just comment this out for now. And let's comment this out as well. And then let's try and run this. So as you can see, we get an error here. And we're getting an error because we have a deadlock here. And we have a deadlock because there's no receiver for this unbuffered channel. And there's actually no capacity for this channel. So there has to be a receiver to immediately receive whatever gets put through this channel. So this essentially just means that an unbuffered channel is just like a middleman, like passing a message from one Go routine to another. So if we go and just add a capacity of this, a capacity of one, and then we run this again, you can see we don't get the deadlock again. And actually we can read from this channel too. So we'll just do print line my channel. And you can see we read the value that was put onto this channel. 
So remember, a buffered channel has a capacity and an unbuffered channel where you just don't put a capacity here has no capacity. It's just like a middleman that passes one message from one go routine to the next. If there's no receiving go routine, you'll get a deadlock. And of course, as you can see here, the syntax for putting something onto a channel is very simple. It's very intuitive. We're just going to put this arrow here, which says we're putting this onto this channel. And to receive something from a channel, you just put an arrow from the channel. So the syntax is very intuitive. You shouldn't have any issue with that. So now let's go back to the original example. We're going to create this channel as a buffer channel with a capacity of two because we're going to have two go routines put a message onto this channel. So we're going to go back to this this takes forever function and after time.sleep which is the the work that's needing to be done we're going to put a message onto that channel that we're done so that means that this function now needs to take in a channel that it can write to and the syntax for that is going to be we're going to put the name of the channel and it's type channel and there's going to be an arrow going to the channel because we want to write to it and what do we want to write to it we want to write a string to that channel and then once this work is finished, we just want to write to my channel and we're going to write just the message, the string done. So now when we call this, this takes forever function, we're going to pass in the channel as well with the ID that needs to be processed. So now once both of these uh, go routines complete, they're, they're each going to put a message on the channel saying that they're finished, right? But there's still no way for main to know that they're finished because the main function isn't doing anything other than creating the channel and passing it off to these go routines that are using it. So we need to have some way for main to know when these go routines are finished without just continuing to finish the program without even thinking about these go routines. So we basically need some way for main to block until these are finished. And a simple way to do that is we can just use a while loop and in go a while loop is just for some condition. So for or while length of my channel is less than two and we're not gonna put anything in there. So all this is going to do is it's going to essentially going to wait for two go routines to put a done message onto this channel. So that's going to block the main function until these two go routines are finished. And then once the length of the channel reaches two, then this while loop will finish and we'll end up down here. And down here, we're gonna close the channel. We have to close the channel. So we'll just do close my channel. And then after the channel gets closed, we're gonna print done. And then we're gonna have the time here for how long it actually took. So let's go ahead and try this out. And as you can see, now it took two seconds, but before it was taking four, right? Because before we were doing these functions and each function takes two seconds, right? And we were doing them synchronously. So we had to call this one and wait for it to finish two seconds. Then we had to call for this one and wait for it to finish two seconds. That's four seconds, right? But now we're sending this one off and sending this one off and they're happening concurrently and each of them take two seconds. But since they're happening concurrently, the total time for the amount of time that it takes for main to complete is still two seconds. And we can actually demonstrate this further if we do a couple more of these, right? So now we have six of these and each of them take two seconds. And if these weren't happening concurrently, that would be a total of 12 seconds. But since they're happening concurrently, all six of these are going to finish in around, around two seconds still. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So we're gonna need to change the capacity, the capacity of our channel to six because it's only two right now, but we wanna put six done messages on this channel now. And we're going to need to change this to keep running until the capacity or the length of the channel reaches six. And then let's go and run it again. And as you can see, it still takes two seconds because those go routines are running concurrently. And actually I can show you what it would look like if we didn't use go routines for this. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. So we're no longer using go routines here. As you can see, there's no longer the go keyword in front of these. So now one won't be able to run until the other one completes. So first this one's gonna have to finish, then this one's gonna have to finish, then this one's gonna have to finish. And if each are two seconds and we have six, it's gonna be a total of 12 seconds. And I sped that up for you guys, but as you can see, it's 12 seconds now because we're not running these, this takes forever functions concurrently. And that is a quick introduction to concurrency in Go.